Earlier this week, we had James Comey testify in front of the uh, House Senate Intelligence Committee, the Senate Intelligence Senate Committee, Intelligence, yeah, not the House which Senate, which is an oxymoron if I've ever heard one. Right, and uh, I, I we we reviewed the written statement and a lot of uh, our opinion of Comey and the entire situation. Uh, you you heard last week, so we won't we won't be bore you with the same details that we uh, posted in that last episode. Um, my impressions of Jim Comey are that I believed a lot of what he said. I believed that uh, he gave a lot of information that uh, seemed very credible. He seems like a very credible man. He's pissing off all sides of all parties. But I did not get the sense from his testimony that he did anything that was rising to the level of obstruction of justice. No. I mean, that's the way I feel as well. Inappropriate, yes, but illegal, no. And I'm sure you have a much stricter standard of it than I do. Uh, of course, especially with Donald Trump. Right. You know, and that's the thing is like, I mean, I feel like that's a pretty good gauge because yeah. you are no fan whatsoever and no. you're more libertarian, you know, you, you take a more libertarian fr- like approach toward it. I And am, so you, if you don't feel like it, I think it's a real hard case to make. I'm a proponent when it comes to these sorts of issues of the truth and what I feel feel the truth is and uh i don't feel like donald trump i think he definitely i think there's a reason that jim comey walked away with the impression that he wanted that uh all of this to end he did of course he does but he could have just ordered him to end it you know there 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 were a lot of testimonies that that really the republicans i felt did a uh, a good job of kind of fighting back the uh, the notion of obstruction of justice, like Marco Rubio, like Tom Cotton, James Tish, when he was saying, "Has anyone ever been prosecuted and indicted or impeached based on hope?" Rich, you know, rich. Yeah, a t t i s c h. I thought it was r i c s c h. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, from Idaho. Yeah, uh, Senator Rich, and um, so but he eliminated it completely. And with getting Comey to eliminate it, the news didn't cover that court line of questioning. Yeah, and here's an Idaho senator of no importance, and he eviscerates the entire argument. Right. Hopes and hope and change doesn't result in an obstruction charge. Exactly, but I do think that it, there is definitely uh, Donald Trump definitely wants this to disappear, and uh, I, I I didn't I I definitely got the impression from the written testimony as I talked about last week that he he wanted um, he wanted the the main thrust was that he wanted it released that he was not being investigated. And that was more of the main. But I got the impression from the spoken testimony that he really wanted all of it to go away. Well, and you can't. It never ends. Right. This is a never-ending cloud of leaks and anonymous sources of and course. close White House officials who aren't willing to go on the record. Yeah. Like today, the new thing is that they've hired a money laundering expert into General Flynn and then a cybersecurity expert attorney to be able to validate that uh, – potentially anonymous transactions into accounts were General Flynn and the Russian government. Interesting. Uh, I walked away much more convinced that there is a a Russian plot, uh, so to speak, but I, I don't think, I don't think that it convinced me a, first of all, the Russians can't hack the American election. No. Okay. They can't do it. Uh, they cannot break into voting machines, and they cannot change votes. That's they, what you think. That's what they want. They, you to they think. got in, but they changed. They can only change uh, like the first four characters of the address in the voter rolls exactly. in those eight states. Ah, that's funny. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it was the it was the like the if you lived on Main Street, they could change it to J T E N Street. But I, but I also I I mean, if you watch the Megyn Kelly Vladimir Putin, uh, far be it for me to take Vladimir Putin's side. <laughs> um, this was one of the first programs to say this guy's going to be uh, an awful uh, problem for us down the road. Oh, I yeah. think it was around eight, episode eighty-seven. Uh, the the Russians are trying to interfere in our elections, just like we do in theirs. Just like we do in theirs. And Putin put the point is that who are you people to sit here and tell the rest of the world? That we are not to interfere in your elections when all you do is try and topple ours and control our elections. And uh, I, I found Putin's interview with Megyn Kelly, he made many, many good points that a lot of non-interventionists would agree with. In that, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at our 
our splinter while not looking at your plank right in the your eye you don't realize that this is all in retaliation as a protect you know the best offense right. or the best defense is a good offense and so that's what they do is they try to intervene we try to intervene we know that like nelson rockefeller the whole reason that 4-h exists was to train young poor rural people in south america to not fall for marxism with shea and fidel castro they gave them land grants they propped up conservative dictators parceled land out gave it to them brought them here trained them at like uh like texas a&m new mexico state then sent them back so that they could operate and run their own uh, property and not fall low lure to like uh we you know the man's keeping us down right you know we didn't paraguay venezuela the whole reason is because his oil fields were nationalized in venezuela and that's right. why he came up with the idea so wait real quick question why did the u.s like why does the u.s get involved in russian elections just because we can or uh, well, to- one it's our intelligence agencies one so like the cia hacker base it came out in the lo- two WikiLeaks ago we trained them to use the exact digital footprint russian hackers use so our cia intrusions have the it's indistinguishable between a russian hack and a cia hack okay but nice. the reason we do is because vladimir putin is rising in power and this is a time when nationalism is rising as a whole mm-hmm. usually everyone thought um like the extreme reactionary neo-nazi you know white pride was dead right it wasn't dead mm-hmm. because eventually multiculturalism had a blowback people were tired of being told that the white man's to blame Mm -hmm. They were tired of being told that diversity is the be all end all. Mm -hmm. And so in a society, there was this organic response that's happening now. And he is the perfect one to lead it because Russians are the most nationalistic people on earth. Right. Mother Russia can do no wrong. And he's a real threat because oil was so high. Mm -hmm. Also, there's only one way to heat your home in Europe. There's only one supplier. It's the pipeline that runs through Turkey. Mm -hmm. That is the Russian. He can shut off the heat in Europe in the winter anytime he wants. And we also put nuclear weapons in Poland yep. throughout Eastern Europe and pointed them directly at the Russians and wondered why they wanted to put them in Cuba. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we have nuclear weapons pointed at them that can hit them at any second. And so he he can either succumb to it. And that's what had happened. Like Russia had fallen. The Soviet Union fell apart. Right. They tried a, a social experiment that didn't work. He, brilliant guy, so he's an economist, by training, he put together his dissertation about how to create these um, like state uh, champions of statehood. And so mm-hmm. what it were, was was key industries. When Russia was leaving socialism, he put up all like the oil industry, the mm-hmm. finance, banking, all these things up for bid to the private sector. Right. But handpicked who got to bid on them, picked all his friends. Right. That way he made them all rich. He was in charge. He was a, because oil was so high, he was able to uh, raise the value of the Russian currency to the point where he implemented a basic income. So every it's not like here where you go to the welfare office. Mm-hmm. It's what you make or if you don't make anything and you get a check. Mm-hmm. And, and Universal I, basic income. I mean, it's only a 13 percent income tax flat and the uh, standard of living is through the roof. Like he's been a hero to Russia. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why he keeps winning. The only people that are anti that are are uh, like there's like a youth resistance movement because they weren't born when he won in 1999 with George W. Bush and how bad it was right and they've got rampant drug problems and so he's cracked down on cultural things you know to keep Mother Russia strong and so the gay uh, community you know the countercultural movement has resisted everything he's done because it looks like old fashioned backwoods he goes, ideas he goes but it's and about lays, cultural preservation yeah he goes and lays a wreath at stalin's grave every year on his birthday i mean it's yeah he even the, though he killed and russians love <laughs> yeah. dictators they don't care so much for democracy yeah, yeah the, like they have fist fights on the floor of their senate the, the, the duma the real reason kind of that, awesome yeah, yeah the real reason they hit that, each other if you call them like a liar <laughs> they like literally slug it out yeah it's kind of awesome the real reason that donald trump scares so many americans is that he is the first Authoritarian, authoritarian type political figure to rise to the level that he's at, and that Andrew he, Jackson, but that wasn't in our life. For sure, right. but well, like you know, where Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump are very similar in in the way that they lead, and they will bullshit to maintain power. You know, we are okay with our as a society. It seems that while well, not we are libertarians, but we as a society seem to accept a certain amount of um uh, lying and bullshit because we feel it's on our behalf uh, enough corruption we'll let you get away with some lying and corruption because we know you have our best interest and that would require me paying attention and i kind of like how things are going right. right but donald trump i feel 
makes everybody freak out because Donald Trump is the first one where he's bullshitting for his own good and not the collective good. You know, even his a, people's good. Right. Mm -hmm. This is very much a racial thing. Right. This is about white European ideals of, you know, freedom and democracy. We know best your ideas of like cultural Marxism where eliminating genders, uh, multiculturalism, being inclusive, not all, you know, the people that blow up buildings are bad. These were all ideas in Columbia University in the 1960s and 70s and came over from uh, Frankfurt University. Right. Like they brought a bunch of intellectuals in and this is where all the revolution, like Tom Sowell studied under these individuals in Harlem. And the idea was we're going to eliminate genders. We're going to eliminate the uh, social structure. They even right. proposed taking babies away from women so there isn't family loyalty, which is mm -hmm. something they do in North Korea. It's literally in the giver, the book. Right, and they, they try yeah. to undermine every yeah. societal institution to the point the state's all that's left. Yeah. And so it was, like, Marxism was forced on people. They decided we're going to do it reverse. We're going to undermine and do it bottom up. Yeah. And so people got tired of it. They got tired of being told the white person's keeping you down or you're to blame. You're the reason for your, you know... If you if you white cis males weren't so stupid, so let's circle back to the Comey testimony. Uh, so Comey Comey testified. What were your impressions, Greg? Oh, I, I think he's Alan Dulles. Okay, I think it was perfectly scripted in order to do create a media to create the exact sound bites the media needed to continue selling. I think that it, I very much think that the deep state is it's Nixon all over again. Alan Alan Dulles was the former fired head of the CIA, by JFK. fired by JFK, and then all of a sudden JFK dies. Yeah, and the Dulles brothers used you know I don't know that I don't think they're going to kill anybody, but I do think that they are going to continue these leaks and the, its coordination with the press because the press respects the people in the intelligence community. They've spent years developing these trustworthy relationships right. with the sources. They're just going to keep anything they feed them. Yep, even though. You have a Senate testimony, which is basically just theatrics, mm -hmm. saying specifically, did he obstruct, you know, based upon your experience as an FBI director, can you think of a single case where someone was charged and convicted of obstruction with justice based on hope? Yeah, I, I as somebody who is fair minded and doesn't have a dog in the fight whatsoever, I watched the complete testimony and I felt that there was, it didn't rise. If the level is reasonable doubt, I felt there was some reasonable doubt that there, I mean, I just wouldn't convict Donald Trump of obstruction of justice. I don't know based that on you that can testimony take, alone. I really hope you can see your way to letting this go. I don't know what governing body gets to decide what that was meant right. and put someone and impeach someone based upon that. Well, it depends on what your definition of is is. <laughs> but we all is is a racist term and I won't allow you to use it. We all know that none of this has anything to do with the truth or justice. It has everything to do with politics. Yeah, it's art it's art and yeah. you know theater. Mm -hmm. Uh speaking of theater, uh, I I watched a lot of the Jeff Sessions testimony. I never really had seen much out of Sessions and uh he's a <laughs> slow good old boy. Uh, uh, Kamala Harris I was like stop rushing me. You're rushing me. I don't like to be rushed. I get nervous. <laughs> People forget he was a democrat. Or, yeah. He was one of the flipping uh, Democrat that flipped with the Reagan revolution. Right. And you so know, like Rick Perry, uh, Kamala Harris is being, uh, oh, well, it's just sexism that people are criticizing. No. Oh, everyone said, look at how they talk to her. Right. Is she the new face of the Democratic no. party? Meanwhile, she was incredibly disrespectful according to Senate rules. And and that's why she was told. To, it's like Elizabeth to Choctaw them. Warren and right. all of the Democrats exempt themselves from the norms and procedures. And then there's outrage that they weren't treated right. Do uh, Jeff Sessions his memory is worse than the potheads he's trying to crack down on. I mean, it's it's all very strategic, and he's just doing it to, you know, well, I can't recall, so he can't get pinned on anything. I felt he was very slippery. Um, but but I, you I, have the right to not incriminate yourself. Of course. But I also enjoyed um, uh, he, him yelling at Ron Wyden, and when he got mad, his cute little face just got all red, and he was like, stop it, stop it. <laughs> um, but Ron Wyden, somebody that uh, on civil liberties issues is great, but... Ron Wyden is the, he is very, um, you know, he is good on civil liberties, but he very much has higher aspirations. And so because mm. of that, he's starting to get toe the line a little bit more. Ron Wyden could never be president if he wanted to no, be. No, but he like, wants to be like labor secretary or head of NSA or something like uh, that okay. in a Democratic administration. Got it. Uh, Basically be what Dan Coates is. Yeah, the deep state would assassinate him before they'd ever let him be. Correct. Uh, Ron Wyden's great on, on the NSA and deep state stuff, but... Uh, 
Yeah, Jeff Sessions, I felt, was very slippery. I didn't feel like he... I felt like he was just trying to clear his name, but he, he just... It didn't seem it seemed to make sense why he was really there. Oh, no, he sent Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, out before to answer all the questions on Russia. Right. You know, and he's the one who appointed Richard Mueller, or Robert Mueller, and right. he's running the special investigation. And Rosenstein is a Democrat. You know, he has connections to the Clinton administration, but... He's about as honest as you're going to find in D.C. I was I, I will be amazed if they don't at least try to bring Sessions back to testify again and force him under the threat of uh, not obstruction, but just contempt, because he invented this uh, policy, longstanding policy of the Justice Department on the spot, basically saying, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to invoke Violate exe executive privilege. executive privilege. Well, the president's the one who declares executive privilege. You can't declare executive privilege on his behalf <laughs> if you're the attorney general. Unless he had advised you of that, because that is established law Absolutely. by a Supreme Court ruling. So if he has said this is where I would, you know, if, if President Trump said this is where you need to be careful because these are the areas I may invoke executive privilege yeah. should I ever have to testify. Yeah. So it it I, I will be surprised if he doesn't come back. Surprising news out of the last few days is that Robert Mueller is starting to man. These special prosecutors always grow tentacles. If you remember, Kenneth Starr was appointed to investigate Whitewater and ended up, you know, prosecuting on uh, Monica Lewinsky and perjury and possible obstruction. And now they're they're. Uh, expanding the scope and now including the president to be investigated under obstruction of justice charges in addition to michael flynn carter page and others for ties to just russia just after he cleared his name all of a sudden the investigation extends to the white exactly house exactly right How and, convenient. So, and so uh, I, I wonder what comey said to mueller privately uh that that helped him uh come he gave to this me conclusion. two winks of double secret you know innuendo and mike pence has retained private counsel uh, as these investigations start to expand. But we're all going to be constitutional lawyers coming very soon. Uh, every Facebook friend of yours is going to know constitutional law in and out. The so Russian puppet. To, right. So look forward to that. I loved it. Vladimir before. Putin came out today and offered full Clement, or um, uh, the same thing he offered Snowden to James Comey. Ha! That's funny. And I thought that was the best troll ha. I've ever seen. He offered you know, full safe passage. Uh, uh, Showtime has a special interview. Oliver Stone, like, the Putin tapes. Yeah, mul uh, Oliver Stone is sitting down doing these long-form interviews with Putin. I'll be interested to see that. Oh, they're wonderful. The first one is outstanding. Is it? I mean, he is playing chess. I've always said it. He plays chess and everybody else plays checkers. He's playing 8D intergalactic chess it's, while everybody else is playing. Someone called it now Trump's at 32D <laughs> acrobatic backgammon. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is the greatest description I've ever heard. Uh, but Robert Mueller, uh, let's talk about the teams that are being formed. You want to uh, talk? You want to talk about that? Or? I think just we'll wrap up, wrap with, up with this. That. Yeah, because the team that Robert Mueller is starting to put together is very impressive. Are you? Are you I leaving? Think, I think Hannah's just walking out of the podcast. She's <laughs> Hold on, we done. need to do our picture for the promotion. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll wait a few minutes. Just yeah, we're, we're wrapping like, up like five minutes. Basically, so. the gist <laughs> of it is this guy's is assembling a legislative team of seasoned experts. One has Dream and has uh, argued over a hundred Supreme Court court. Supreme Court cases. One had, was a special aide on White or uh, Watergate. I mean, these are the who's who. For, I mean, led by a former FBI director, Jeannie Ree, a former senior advisor to Eric Holder, white collar criminal crime specialist, a cybersecurity expert, Aaron like, Zebley. These are this is the this is the A team of special prosecution attorneys. And Trump's loading up with a bunch. One guy that's kind of a Wall Street attorney. That's his hit lead. Then he's brought in someone from a Christian. A, a, an alternative to the um, Southern Law and Poverty Center, right. but like Jay a white Sekulow. Christian version. Um, Southern Law and Poverty right. Center, but Jay like a white Sekulow. Christian version. Yeah. And then uh, four major firms have all declined to um, participate. J Jay Sekulow is somebody that you've probably seen if you've ever ventured into the right media. The uh, American Center for Law and Justice yeah. was always kind of the conservative Christian answer to the ACLU. Yeah. And he's considered by a lot of people to be a clown. He's the Pat Buchanan version of Andrew Dampolitano. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly right.